Real Life Science. All right, real life science. First off, we've got This Week at NASA, TWAN. They put it out every week. The video uh, link is in the show notes for all of these. It talks about Senator Bill Nelson was confirmed by the Senate as the 14th NASA administrator. Crew One prepares for a return to Earth. Spoiler alert, we've got a video coming up next. They succeeded, they, they landed safely. Congrats, welcome home to them. Remembering astronaut Michael Collins. Ingenuity Mars Copter meets all mission objectives after the third successful flight and NASA sets a new extended mission agenda. Core stage for Artemis 1 SLS arrives at the launch facility and RS-25 did an engine testing process that had a, a complete success. SpaceX Crew-1 Mission Safe Splashdown, May 2nd. Check that video out. NASA Mars Helicopter and the Future of Extraterrestrial Flight. They set an agenda where they talk about, they talk for like a half an hour in this video where they get into the minutia of, okay, we needed to test this. We needed to see that we could fly something on another planet. We you know, thought we could, but we needed to see, and we did. And now here's our what our plans are for Mars, and here's what our plans are for Titan, and here's what our plans are for Venus, and yada, yada, yada. And each of them have their own unique concerns and own unique sort of things that they have to address. Um, next up. Simply Space, uh, the first real images of Titan. What have we discovered? Very cool little video. Go check it out. Titan is the future. Even more so than Mars, Titan is the future of human expansion. It's just farther out, so we have to do Mars first before we can get to Titan. But once we are able to get to Mars and Titan both, Titan is a much better opportunity for a stable human colonization project because it A, has a very strong magnetosphere, which protects it from radiation, and B, has ma like a, a really good atmosphere and has massive amounts of all the chemicals we need to 3D print everything that we need going forward. Anton Petrov put out a video. Could these 14 objects really be antimatter stars? Studies suggest so. Very, very cool. Go check it out. We're going to talk next week more about antimatter very important. I think it's a very easy for a lot of people to sort of not understand it. We're going to get into it. And real engineering, can nuclear propulsion take us to Mars? First off, the, the start of this video was amazing. It explains something that I don't think most people understand. I think 99.9% .9 of everyone, if you tell even elite fans, if you tell them, hey, do you know that, you know, uh, Voyager 1 and 2, the only reason why that worked was because of a super weird special launch window that only happens like like the next time it's going to happen is like 180 years from now where they were able to all of the planets lined up in just such a weird way that they were able to sort of gravity assist and go like through this planet, this planet, this planet, this planet. They were all lined up just perfectly, which only happens every couple hundred years that they could do a launch that would work to use all of them going out. Really, really amazing stuff. There was a guy, it starts with the story of this guy who was working at JPL. He's up in the middle of the night. He's doing these weird tests on gravity assist, um, um, sort of like measuring it out and planning it out. And like, what would happen in this configuration? What would happen in that configuration? And he looked and just happened to find, hey, wait, in a couple of years, there's going to be this once every couple hundred years set up that lets you launch and go all the way out like that. Holy shit, we got to use that. And they real quick built Voyager 1 and 2 and made it happen. And that's amazing. But it, what they're talking about now is if we use nuclear engines, there's ways that we can do things that, you know, we couldn't do without. And it, it's all balancing the mass needed as opposed to, you know, the mass needed for the fuel increases your weight, which then means you need more mass for the fuel. It's a whole, you know, vicious cycle. They talked, there was a, NASA had a program called NERVA, which was a nuclear, uh, you know, engine program, which was scrapped and then has just recently been reopened for Mars mission planning. And very, very cool, just a little tie into For All Mankind, which we talked about last week. NERVA was how Pathfinder works on For All Mankind. Very, very cool shit. So that's, that is the for uh, real life science. Links are in all the show notes. Go look at these videos. Check that out. It is good shit.